Nothing happens in a vacuum. And especially when it comes to politics. This whole Trump yay dinner was, it turns out, this was a setup. And guess who set it up? Milo Yiannopoulos, who, by the way, was on this podcast with Tim Pool and Ye and Nick Fiantes. What the media is not reporting, because I watched the podcast, and I have to applaud Tim. He held himself flawlessly. I mean, just cool, calm, collective. And he was willing to just start with the news, roll with it. So kudos to Tim for being professional about this. But Ye wanted to instantly get into this whole issue of whether or not he was anti-Semitic. And I don't think that Ye is. I think that he just believes that he has these particular forces working against him. A lot of artists feel that way. A lot of great composers thought that way. Tchaikovsky thought that way. He, he always felt that fate was working against him. But Milo Yiannopoulos sets up this dinner with Trump and Ye. And Trump had no idea that Nick Fientes was going to be there. And it took me less than two minutes. Listen up, media. It took me less than two minutes to find out just going to Wikipedia that Nick Fiantes is part Hispanic, his father's half Mexican, and that he's not only anti-Semitic, but he's anti-conservative, anti-atheist, and anti-homosexual. Why couldn't the media report that? As I said, it took me less than two minutes to find out. So when I saw this story for the first time that Trump had this dinner with Ye, and I said, oh, he met with white supremacists. I said, this is going to be a setup or, or this is going to be uh, some type of uh, media debacle that's going to blow up in the liberal media's face, mainstream media's face. And sure enough, it did. And I'll throw this out there. I believe that in 2024, we're going to have two independent candidates running, Ye and Trump. But I don't think Ye is going to make it to the primaries. I've been beating this drum for the longest time. Trump needs to go independent and take all his supporters with him. But they're saying that Milo set up this dinner as a way to get back at Trump. And Milo's been gone for quite a while now. I think he got banned from some sites. But what are the odds that Milo Yiannopoulos, Nick Fiantes, and Ye would be on this podcast with Tim Pool? Admittedly, Tim wanted them there. But what are the odds that they would leave at the same time? I could just picture this. I could just picture this. So Ye walks out within the first five minutes of this interview. And there goes Milo and Nick Fiantes. Oh, it's okay, man. We got your back, bro. We got your back. Quick, quick, get in the car. Get to the airport. <laughs> I could just picture that. Couldn't you? Hey, you're going to get some truth on this channel. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I'm an independent voter. I'm a regular guy out here. I watch the news. I'm smart. I know what side of the bread the butter's on, like a lot of you do. All of you do. And you're not falling for any of this. Whether you voted for Trump or didn't vote for Trump. I know a lot of you out there, you don't buy into this Republican, Democrat, bull, you know what. Try to keep this a family show. So at The Guardian, just read you the headline here. Milo Yiannopoulos claims he set up Fiante's dinner to make Trump's life miserable. Right-wing provocateur says he helped arrange for white supremacists to attend dinner with Trump and Kanye West, now known as Ye. And you got to feel bad for Ye. You just got to feel bad for the guy. I mean, 
when you grow up in that type of environment, the celebrity lifestyle, and for the most part, he is a self-made man. There's no question about that. But when you get into that type of world and you're surrounded and you're cushioned by people, you know, it, 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 I think it really changes you in a lot of ways. One thing I'm thankful for is I'm where I'm at right now in my life with this channel. And I'm ground, uh, grounded, very grounded. Because I don't have to come here and be something that I'm not. I can just be myself. You like the videos, you do. You don't? Okay, fine. But at least I'm real with you. Isn't that what you want? You want somebody who's going to run for president to be real with you. I'm tired of the BS. Give it to me straight, man. You know, what was his name? I, I'm drawing a blank here. But uh, Thelonious Monk. He had a documentary, Straight No Chaser. Thelonious Monk. And they say that playing with Monk, Thelonious Monk, was like going down an elevator shaft. You never know where he ended up. Straight No Chaser. That's what we need. Give us things as they are. Don't sugarcoat it. And that's why people like Trump. Because he doesn't sugarcoat things. And that's the thing they couldn't stand about the guy in D.C. You can't say this. You can't say that. Well, to hell with you people. It's just like these people here on YouTube, Tanya. You can't say this. You can't say that. Because Tim Pool was talking about this. Where you can't talk about the 2020 election. Otherwise, YouTube will ban you. Well, first of all, YouTube. And I appreciate being on this platform. First of all, I have freedom of speech in this country. These are my videos that I produce. I have every right to say what I want to say on these videos, as long as it's not engaging in criminal activity or slandering somebody or inciting a riot. Then I have every right to ask questions. It's called debate, freedom of speech. If you don't understand that, the purpose of the First Amendment, maybe you shouldn't exist as a platform. I mean, that's the, the, the just the truth about it. It just gets me every time. People who claim to be for free speech and open and honest debate and free expression, who made their money off of free speech, debate, freedom of expression in Hollywood, on these platforms, whatever they may be, not just YouTube, so YouTube, I'm not picking you out here, okay? But they made their money off of this uh, thing called free speech. And they're going to tell people, you can't do this, you can't say this, you can't say that. No, you can't cry fire in a crowded theater, or as I said, slander somebody inside a riot, engage in criminal activity, or instruct people to engage in criminal activity on a YouTube channel. Anybody with two cents worth of brains knows that. But this is just too funny to me. It, it, so Milo's going to try to get back at Trump, and this is going to backfire big time, if it hasn't already backfired. Not only on Milo, but on the mainstream media. Everything they've thrown at Trump, including the kitchen sink, <laughs> including the sink that uh, Elon Musk brought into Twitter, Nothing faces the guy. I mean, it just he's like uh, the Teflon man. We're in a Teflon suit. But this, this is the fun part about doing this channel, really, is to be an independent guy out here who gets up and goes to work, who knows what it's like to be on the inside, okay? Who knows what it, uh, the inside of being the ordinary guy out there. That's what I'm trying to say. Just be the regular guy out there who gets up, goes to work, or gal who gets up and goes to work, Tries to raise, uh, raise a family. Maybe you're single like me. You're just trying to make it. And every day you get up, you turn on news, and this is what you're facing. This insanity from both sides. Yeah, we've got to get Trump somehow. I mean, even Biden, too. We've got to get Biden. How the hell could you vote for a guy like Biden? I'm just asking, how the hell could you vote for a guy like Biden? He's like blue, blue years old. Doesn't know where he is half the time. I mean, for a party that believes in diversity, you elect the whitest 
tastiest, most scripted person on the planet. But he's your guy because he's not Trump. Uh huh. So that's a big news. Milo Yiannopoulos claims he set up Nick Fiante's, this Trump, yay, Nick Fiante's dinner to get back at Trump. And they stormed off of this podcast with Tim Pool. But the fact that Milo and Nick Fiantes were there and they all run out of the room at the same time, coincidence? I think not. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. You can also follow me on Instagram, hashtag Jason Composes. Find me at Twitter, Culture Confederacy at Twitter. And this is the Culture Confederacy saying peace out. Stay safe, everybody. God bless this thing we call the United States. And I'll catch you next time.